men flirting with you and warranted trauma dump on them. Damn, baby, you trying to throw that thing back for me. My mama died of a heroin overdose. Bitch, what the fuck? Why you know it, Cody? <laughs> because mommy's hair straight. It's sweet. Oh, thank you. Well, your hair's really beautiful, too. Your hair is curly. People have different kinds of hair. We get to have fun taking care of them different ways. Because different is beautiful. Moisture. Okay. Put a little bit of water. Moisture. Scrunch. Curly. Curly. Is beautiful. Beautiful. Let's look at you. I'm beautiful. I'm loving curly hair. Moisturize these beautiful thick curls with a leave-in conditioner, which will also help detangle the kinks. Now, part all your hair into sections and clip it away. You're doing an amazing job. Yay, you did it! That was so much fun. Hang on to your panties, because this one might put them in a wad. 60% of autistic people are able to use spoken communication, while the remaining 40% are nonverbal. People look at those numbers and think the majority of us do all right with communication. My friend Colby and I are both counted in that 60%. Looking for wallet. I lost my wallet in a trash can one time. Wait, it's wallet. Mine was in the trash can. I don't know where yours is. Rescue was. To rescue, rescue the wallet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I rescue my wallet. What is different? Hoof versus paw. Hoof is a kind of claw. It is, yep. There's no fingers, right? It's a good fingerness. Emphasize big feet. Elephants do have big feet. Huge paws. Huge paws. I don't know if they're called paws. Em emphasize huge less than feet. They do. Elephants have huge everything. Just because someone is technically verbal doesn't mean that they don't struggle with communication. It is so frustrating that the neurodiversity movement began because of people like Colby, but then people like me dominate advocacy spaces. Because our communication skills are different, I understand that Colby probably wouldn't participate in the sort of discussion I'm having with you right now. People like me who use online platforms to advocate for social acceptance are not the rule. We're the exception. Please keep this in mind as we continue to advocate for autism awareness and acceptance this month. 
Elise, what is Trump's indictment? First thing to know is an indictment is an accusation. Kind of like how I want to indict men with dangly earrings in one ear as master manipulators, but they're not going to jail. The charges come from a $130,000 hush money payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels. In the early 2000s, Stormy Daniels and Trump allegedly had an affair, and the money was to prevent her from breaking that story. Now, hush money payments aren't illegal, but the money was recorded as legal fees. Also, since this payment was made before the 2016 election, prosecutors are saying that he used this to try and influence the outcome. Here's where we get some real housewife level drama. So apparently Trump paid off his doorman because the doorman claimed that Trump had a child out of wedlock. And he paid off a Playboy star that claimed to have had an affair with him. Apparently you can either be a proud slut or president and we all know which one Trump chose. The 34 counts are the amount of false business records. Trump is pleading not guilty and it's unlikely that he'll go to jail. But this is the first time in history that a former president has had criminal charges. <laughs> what a great never have I ever option. So this isn't the end of Trump 2024. Even if he went to jail, he could still run for president. I mean, you gotta give it to him. Trump's positive self-talk game off the charts. I mean, he is slaying those morning affirmations. Moral of the story, no matter how powerful of a man you are, you can always be defeated by a girl. Mmm, this chicken is so good. I love the mushroom sauce that they definitely incorporated for flavor related reasons and not to distract from the fact that the chicken is severely under seasoned and incredibly dry. <laughs> wow, I love how colorful this wedding is. Ugh, we've got some white, <laughs> then we've got the color white. Got some greens over there, like two shades of green. Love that. I love color. Did you hear about the girl they kicked out of the bridal party at the last minute? She was supposed to be one of the bridesmaids, but the bride kicked her out because she didn't like the shade of her dress. It wasn't plum enough. Like, who does that? Get a proper plum dress or don't be a bridesmaid, you know? Oh my god, isn't it kind of rude that all of these women are so dressed up at someone else's wedding? Oh no, that's not really a thing in our culture. It is literally physically impossible for anyone to look nearly as good as the bride. What? How is that possible? I don't understand. Why is there an army of 40 women following the bride? Oh, those are all her bridesmaids. They love each other a lot. Um, to a scary extent, actually, they would definitely use their 40 pound solid gold inherited jewelry to destroy anyone that wronged one of the other women in the group, so just be careful. Don't you just love family weddings? I just met a gentleman who is apparently my second cousin. Steve, meet Aisha. She's my aunt, sister-in-law's second cousin's nephews, former tutors, parents, lawyers, granddaughters, great niece, but we're basically family. <laughs> yeah, my youngest gets pretty antsy at weddings. He finds them really tiring and boring. <laughs> he doesn't really enjoy them too much, do you, buddy? Yeah, it's hard having to watch him the entire time. Oh my god, my son loves these weddings. I don't even have to worry about where he is because he's just running around with his friends. Honestly, he screams the entire time and he's so tired by the time we get home that he just falls asleep. Some of my best memories and the best relationships I've made within my family were actually from being one of the screaming children at these weddings. Hey, why is your grandma staring at me? Oh, she doesn't speak English, but she thinks you look really lovely in her cultural clothing. Lucas, why is your grandma staring at me? Oh, she's just racist. Hello, I am definitely not wearing anything around my neck and stuff has happened. So what's up? Donald Trump, who once bragged about having fewer tall buildings to compete with after 9-11, has been arrested. He flew to New York where he walked into a place and they arrested him and charged him with 34 counts of falsifying business documents. The arrest was covered by virtually every camera on planet Earth and it, and, and that's too much. Anyway, he pled not guilty and then went home, so. If we're gonna be in the politics space talking about dumb bullshit, let's talk about some far more dumb bullshit going on in Tennessee. Here is what happened. One, a bunch of gun violence happened in Tennessee. Two, a bunch of students went to the state house and protested for better gun control. Three, some Democrats stood with those students. Four, Republicans called that an insurrection. And five, Republicans are now trying to force those Democrats out of the state house. Because the right thing to do when a bunch of literal children come to you from your state asking you for help is to kick their representatives out of the vote. Very cool and healthy democracy we have here. If you own a Nintendo Switch, you probably are aware of Joy-Con, the controllers that come attached to the Switch that can be detached and whatnot. Joy-Cons infamously have a horrible drift problem. Problem. And they've been like in lawsuits over this before and they've been repairing them and whatnot But the EU Commission reached out to Nintendo and was like hey you you gotta make good on this like for realsies though In response Nintendo is now saying that they will repair Joy-Cons free of charge 
forever. This is really cool, but also Nintendo like swore up and down for a long time that this wasn't a real issue. We did science. Are you aware of the double slit experiment? The, the experiment with like quantum physics where you like shine a light through two parallel slits and we can prove that light is both particles and waves? If not, bear with me. So we did that experiment, but apparently like with time. Basically some scientists led by a PhD student named Romain Tirol. Sorry if I butchered that, you're really smart. Anyway, they used a meta material and, and this meta material is able to be manipulated at ridiculous speed. And so they manipulated this material and then shined light at it and measured refractions from it and basically got like a similar pattern with, with the spatial wave stuff, but with time. I don't know what this means, it, um, but it's really cool. Rapid fire. After an election last night, the Wisconsin Supreme Court now is going to have a leftish, in air quotes, leaning majority. And that might mean that they're not gonna have abortion bans and horrible gerrymandering anymore. Finland joined NATO. The creator of Settlers of Catan has unfortunately passed away. So go uh, get resources. And finally for today, the former chief of staff of former Maryland governor, Larry Hogan, is dead after going on the run from the FBI for a fraud investigation. Cool. Let's hear what you got. Hi. Well, these little... Wrap it up. Exit that way. Thank you. Yeah, I had a really fun day. Well, aren't you gonna ask me? Ask you what? Well, how my day was. Well, I'm autistic, and I expect that if you have something that you want to tell me or share with me, that you'll just do it. Because that's what I do. I don't wait for people to ask me things. I just give up information if I want them to know. So you're saying that you'll just give up information even if nobody asked? Yeah, I don't really like the whole back and forth questions thing because I don't really like when the pressure gets put on me to answer a question. So instead, I just offer up information if I want others to know about it. And I expect other people to do the same and I forget that it's the social norm that I'm supposed to ask. Hey, do you know what a logical fallacy is? You don't? Well, come listen. Here are some of the top five logical fallacies that I see on a daily basis used by people who are not making great arguments. Number five, the Mott and Bailey. This is an argument where the speaker intentionally blurs the line between two positions. One argument, the Mont being the most easily defended, and the other, the Bailey, the one that's kind of harder to defend. We must eradicate transgenderism. You just said you wanted to eradicate trans people? No, 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 I said transgenderism. I didn't, I don't, I didn't mean trans people. Right. Number four. This one's hard to say. <laughs> the post hoc ergo propter hoc. It, it basically means conflating correlation over causation. Socially and medically transitioning helps trans people. Oh, really? Explain the 50% suicide rate then. The suicide rate has nothing to do with being trans. It has to do with society accepting them. Oh, okay. Number three, the slippery slope fallacy. This is an argument that suggests allowing one action will eventually lead to other actions that are normally more heinous than the beginning one. We should allow gay people to get married. Oh, really? Then what's next? People marrying their dogs? When will it end? Okay. Number two, this one is super common. I see it all the time. The straw man argument. This is where somebody purposely misunderstands your argument and simplifies it so it's easier for them to destroy. I think we should have stricter gun laws. What? So you just want to ban all guns? You want the government to be the only ones allowed to have guns? You only want cops to have guns. Like, you don't want people to have guns? What if they come and try to hurt you? That's not what I said. No, you just want to ban all guns for law-abiding citizens and not only the criminals have them. <laughs> uh, and number one, the most commonly used logical fallacy, the ad hominem. This is an argument that attempts to discredit the argument by attacking the person's character instead of the actual thing they're saying. Oh yeah? Where'd you learn that? At your liberal college because you're a libby libby lib lib libby libby lib I can't even listen to anything you have to say because you're just a dumb lib- Okay, I think I've heard enough. Hope this was helpful. Have a good night, y'all, and stay left. Hey, you did something I didn't like. Would you mind explaining to me why you did it? Absolutely, and I apologize for doing something that you didn't like. Here is why I did the thing. Um, I didn't ask for a fucking excuse. I asked for a reason. Why? What are you doing? Mm. Uh, preparing myself to deal with that damn bullshit. 
Natural hairstyles for when you're no longer a teenager. Part your hair in half, and I'm using Cream of Nature Flexible Styling Snot. I like this gel because it's got an amazing hold that doesn't revert. Smooth it onto the section and brush it through gently. Secure that section with a gentle elastic, and then repeat to the other side. So smooth. All right, now just make a chunky twist to each ponytail. The chunkier, the better. Bring it across the top of your head and bobby pin it into place. Repeat this to the other side. Fluff out the twists. And that's it. Easy and simple. Follow for more natural hair care tips. what would be considered a hyperverbal autistic person, which sounds like I just talk a lot, which is true, but being hyperverbal is also much more than that. It includes the volume, tone, speed, word choice, and complexity of the language used. It often gets harder to control during experiences of intense emotions or situations. For me, the amount of words I have to say can sometimes be overwhelming and ironically lead to situational speech loss. I also struggle with stuttering because of the speed at which I talk. For the longest time, I thought I was just overly talkative, but understanding that I'm hyperverbal has helped me be more accepting of myself and quirks. Welcome to insane wedding toppers I found while Heather and I were looking for wedding toppers. I am now 100% sure the straights are not okay. So this one, you know, it's weird, it's odd, it's strange, but I do think this couple at least likes each other if they have this wedding topper. Now, now we're getting slightly more weird because now I feel like you don't like each other. Why are you getting married? Sorry I missed our wedding, honey. I had to cyber bully the libs. <sighs> the straights are not okay. They're not okay. This one kind of like, because I feel like she's pushing him off the cake for the insurance money. Get your paper, girl. I'm going to need whoever made this to pay me for making me look at it with my face eyes. For when you're a boomer and the memes simply are not enough. This feels like a John Waters movie. I feel like this wedding topper is illegal in the state of Tennessee. Are y'all okay? Do you like each other? Y'all either don't like each other or you'll like each other a little too much. Just say you're gonna be thinking about James Dean in the bedroom. You stop getting married if you don't like each other. Let's style some cartoon outfits. Today's look is inspired by Kirby. Kirby's a nice light pink, so I've got all my light pink button up. And on top, I'm adding my sparkly bustier by Trashy. To bring in Kirby's like shadow color, I wanna put on my darker pink pants. For head accessories, do you think I should go for my earmuffs or tiny earmuffs? Which one? So I put on this light pink belt here around the waist. I also put a belt around my chest and then tucked it into the bustier. I love the belt buckle and I really wanted to show that. I added these rings, a chain around the waist, pink bows onto my pants, I layered up pearl necklaces and chains. I've got all my balloon animal earrings by Papa's Crafts. And I also chose these big earmuffs. I don't know why, but I had this urge to clip a chain to this alarm clock and put it on because the pinks are just so perfect together. Final touch, these blue glasses. And I chose blue because Kirby's eyes are blue. So I wanted to kind of tie that in. And this is the entire entire Kirby inspired outfit. This honestly might be one of my favorite ones. I don't know. This outfit just makes me feel really good, really confident, and Kirby slays. So yeah, that's it. Bye guys. Thanks for watching. What do you mean walking on your toes is weird? I do it all the time. That's why I wear heels. Randall, Randall, listen to me. I cannot understand you when you are crying, okay? Of course, Kennedy is so advanced for her age. She takes after her mother. When I was three, I was able to color coordinate my wardrobe by size, texture, and fabric, and color. No, Randall, I'm not upset. This is just my face. Why do you keep asking me that? Randall, the cleaner is now five minutes late. My entire schedule is thrown off by a whole five minutes. The rest of the day is gone. You don't understand. What do you mean Kendall got thrown out of school for fighting? The boy snapped her bra strap, so I would have thrown him down the stairs too. I am out of Chardonnay and I'm gonna make it everyone's problem! 
Oh my gosh, you're not being rude at all. So I was born with an extremely rare neurological disorder called Novaire syndrome. This syndrome is so rare that it only affects one individual in every three to four million. It affects my sixth and seventh cranial nerves. So my eyebrows don't move, my eyes don't trap from left to right, and my upper lip doesn't move, which means I can't smile. When I was around the age of 11 or 12, I had a super invasive operation called the smile surgery. The surgery was essentially supposed to gag and make me smile normally. So they took tissue from my right thigh and implanted it internally from the corners of my mouth up into my temples. So the idea is that when I'd clench down on my jaw, the corners of my mouth would turn up and mimic a normal smile. But obviously the surgery didn't work and this is my smile. And I love it. Ah, time to unwind and unmask. <laughs> Food review, let's check it out. I would love to have this job. Cooking things for TikTok? Humans strive to work. It's what we do, and it's what we've done for all of human history. Labor should be something that you are proud of, an extension of yourself. The problem is that once a worker is separated from the control of their labor, that labor is no longer a reflection of their humanity. Under this economic system, labor is turned into a commodity to be bought and sold, and so work becomes this horrible thing that you have to do in order to survive. And because human beings are reduced to the output of their labor, completely separated from the product, they are too separated from one another in competition, creating individualism instead of communality, which is a big problem. You want to know what else is a big problem? The fact that this isn't in my belly, 10 out of 10. You may be surprised to know that a lot of Filipino recipes are actually naturally vegan, including this Ginataan Bilo Bilo. Welcome back to my series, Oh My Gulai, where I teach you how to make vegan Filipino recipes. Simmer some sticky rice balls in a sweet coconut milk soup with langka, also known as jackfruit, sweet potatoes, tapioca pearls, and bananas. And once everything is tender, enjoy this as a snack or dessert. We go back like a couple hundred years it was pretty normal to own slaves is that right or correct uh, why are we talking about slavery because i'm showing you why the ad populum fallacy is a logical fallacy honestly back then a lot of black people participated in the slave trade themselves so yeah that doesn't make slavery right are you trying to defend it was slavery a product of the time dude it are was you a trying to defend slavery did you not see matt walsh's new video on this topic i did and i think that defending slavery is cringe as Defending slavery, but I think we're illogical if we didn't realize that a lot of Black people enjoyed being slaves back when slavery was a thing. Um, well, how do you know that Black people enjoyed being slaves? I mean, it's just in history. I've like read about like a lot of Black people not only participated in capturing slaves, but a lot of Black people enjoyed being slaves because, of course, when you're when you're really? brought up doing something like being a slave your whole life, it's all you know. I'm sure a lot of slaves probably enjoyed it and were happy because that's the only lifestyle they were aware of. That's crazy. Can you not like? Can you not think like that? Like, is it really that dense? I have of never like, heard of somebody enjoying having to work countless hours on a plantation being dehumanized and whipped and told they're not human and being beaten within an inch of their life and being saying that I don't okay. think that people I'm enjoy just saying that you can't deny the fact that there were probably slave owners that just like there were really bad ones there were probably slave owners that probably treated their slaves really nice too right like you're not thinking logically you're being so dense so i'm just gonna say that in general i think it's wrong to own humans of course we're not in that time period anymore but you're defending slavery i'm not defending Do you want me to grab your bags? This is my room. What did you want to do tonight? Oh my gosh, same. Do you want to start with makeup? It's a fidget toy you can hold while I do your eyes. Just to let you know, I have all of your safe foods in the fridge ready to go whenever you want them and you don't have to ask me if you want to eat them. Do we want to do um, that one? Okay. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Finish it off with some sparkles. 
Thank you so much for letting me do your makeup. Do you want to see the coolest dinosaur toy I've ever gotten? It's a dimorphodon. You can hold it, yeah. Here you go. Do you want a face mask and watch your favorite movie? Don't worry, you can info dump about any part you want to. Okay, we just gotta clean our faces before we put these face masks on. This is a non-overpowering scent, so don't worry about it at all. I got this face mask, but you smell it beforehand. If it's too overpowering, we won't use it. Is that okay? Cool. All right. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, wait, come here. Remember, if it starts burning, let me know and we can take them home. Ready? Just finding the movie and play. I have, for example, the most thorough study ever conducted on the subject, which- Oh, Matt Walsh has a study? Let's see, let's see. Is he going to lie about the Swedish study? Or is he going to cite the rapid onset gender dysphoria bunk study? Which which one do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be- <laughs> Chat, throw, throw your guesses in chat. Guess one for he's going to lie about the Swedish study. Guess two for citing the rapid onset gender dysphoria study. Let's see. Chat seemed to think probably, probably, ooh, ooh, it's really close, really close. Chat is very undecided. Those are the two studies that, that transphobes ever cite. 30 years and found that is highest for trans people 10 to 15 years after medical transition. That's the lie about the Swedish study. Shit like this brings the movement down. Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around.